Ron Fez show. You know, uh, Earl was watching MTV at uh, midnight on uh, New Year's <laughs> Eve, Fezzy. Earl, I swear to God, if anything gets on TV la the, the following day, it's played on this show. Got that TV mind. I can't help myself. You really do. Good thing he doesn't watch TV land. We get the Brady Bunch theme to open with. Why even bring that up? Oops. Why even bring that up? All right, it is the Ron and Fez show. I'm Ron Bennington. Guess who's with me today? Uh, one day only, Fez Watley. It's more than one day, but hiya, buddy. Is that right? Oh, yeah. I thought you were today's special co-host. Nah, me and you for life. Ugh. For life. Ugh. Uh, Black Girl Douglas with us and uh, Eastside Dave. Is today a uh, little gossip show or no? That's mm -hmm. Fridays? Yeah, I think uh, board gossip is tomorrow on the Ron and Fed show. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible thing. All right, boys. Um, before we get the show together, you know what? I want to bring uh, Dave and Earl in here so we could have a little meeting. Come on in, Earl. Come on over because I, I, I need uh, – this is uh, – you know, Fez, uh, we pull the curtain back in oh, radio. Okay. That's what it's called. Let's take a look backstage and see what happens on the Ron and Fez show. You go ahead and move over there, Johnny. You sit right next to that board, and you feel like a man. You feel like a man for two seconds. <laughs> That's an old to do. Quick, hit the other thing. I want to bid on. Now. I'm only kidding you, Johnny. All right, boys. How are you, Dave? Good. Earl? I'm good. All right, the meeting started. I just want to ask you guys, is this a, an acceptable gift? Is this an acceptable Christmas gift? <laughs> is this what the meeting is about? What? That, that is, is it. That's oh my, it. That's worse th in person <laughs> than on the website. Here is the ashtray that Fez Watley got me for Christmas. Why would you bring that in here? A white ceramic <laughs> ashtray. Man. That this was the entire Christmas present this to me. You cannot fit cigars in there. <laughs> Be careful with that thing. You can barely fit a cigarette on here. You can fit stuff in there. You can't fit candy cigarettes in here. It's Grandma's candy dish. And this is it. It's not like, oh, here's your first present. The rest are coming later. This is Fez Watley's Christmas present to me. Now, let me ask you this. Is this, and you can see how white it is, 50 or 60 years no. old? Fucking way! <laughs> Thank you. No is, way. How about you? It's fifty been, hours old. I don't think it's fifty years. It's I mean, been well preserved. Now I'm gonna put on a best of Fez, and I'm taking you down to the ATM, <laughs> no. and we are taking some money out, and you're gonna make good on Christmas. I don't have my card on me. Not only that, but that ashtray was not even, was not has, wasn't close to being in Touch Shores restaurant. That ashtray was from Kmart. But if I look now, you know, in the fifties, they didn't have this snazzy logo in the middle Why of this ashtray. They? Now you're just nitpicking. Because Why wouldn't they? It, there's the logo that looks like it's off of uh, Yes's fucking Tales of Topographic Oceans, <laughs> and in the meantime, the rest of it is just plain white ceramic. And I keep looking for a date to see, like, 1999 or 89, because there's no way that this is old. I think it was just put away and kept nice. No. It's from Contemporary Ceramics in Jersey. <laughs> see, when was the last time they made uh, anything in Jersey? Everything's outsourced now. That's... Things don't get made in this country. The... If it was new, it'd be in Hong Kong or China or something. The company exists in New Jersey. God knows where it came from. I think that company was founded in 1999. <laughs> sure. It was not. Who founds a ceramics <laughs> company in 1999? No, who gives out a fucking ceramic to their partner? <laughs> if you would have made this in a kiln, maybe then I'd feel good about it. You're not coming off as very appreciative. I mean, maybe that's the way to find out, to find out when that company was established. Because you know it wasn't in the 50s. Dave, open the window. I'm chucking this out on 57th Street, and hopefully it hits a tourist. Do not throw that out the window. That's your Christmas gift from me, your best friend. No best friend does this. I now it look at it. I, I, I want you to just look at what at you fucking anymore. gave me. <laughs> this Christmas is never going to end. It's 2007. This is the time of fucking downloads. No one gives out a ceramic ashtray. Nothing can be vintage that's sparkling white. No, that looks like it's you. glistening. Now, how many times have I said, let's stop giving each other Christmas gifts. Let's drop it. Hey, by the way, do you notice like there's still Christmas things up? Now, yeah. And no one cares. Oh, yeah. It's almost like it's April. I got my Christmas stuff up. But, I mean, oh, my Lord, Mr. W. Oh, I can't God. believe you brought that in here. I can't keep it at my house. 
It's an embarrassment. That it's, should be in a place of honor in your home, not being dragged through the city. It's two inches by three inches. There's yeah. no type of cigar that could possibly fit there. And this lettering looks like a stamp. It doesn't even look like it was lettered on. I mean, because I took lettering in high in school. There. It's nothing. <laughs> this is nothing. That's a great gift. Is this white? <laughs> Sixteen oh nine. He spent for it. I spent a lot more than that. That just happened to be an eBay price. If that's true, then you're you're a rube. eBay means look. This is what it's worth. And you gave me. Some, I don't care what you spent. It's worth sixteen oh nine. And I think I see the T's and Toots Shore peeling <laughs> off. I don't even think that that, that it was from his place at all. They are no. not peeling off. Why would he have this? Why would anyone have this? And a classy ashtray from a classy bar. B, what, what do I care about an ashtray from Touch Shore's place? What does this even mean? I Is it an insult? Just let me know. I thought it was a nice piece of New York memorabilia that you would enjoy and you could get some use out of. You smoke. That really is an in-your-face, like, I mean, when Ron was talking about it, it was one right. thing, seeing it in person, I it's a to, big F you. Yeah, I had to bring it in. <laughs> it is not. It is. It's it a is. big fuck you to Ronnie It's a Bates. gift of love. Is it seriously? Yes. I thought a lot, I, a lot of thought went into that. What? <laughs> that you would enjoy that, that you would enjoy having a piece of New York memorabilia. It also is a reminder of when we went out and had a great night. We went to the fucking movies. It was not a great night. I, I finally was... once took you to a documentary. <laughs> That's the only thing that happened. I do this two or three times a week. I don't sit back and think about <laughs> times I went to a movie theater. Frank Gifford was there. Yes. So what? It was a great night. I wouldn't want Frank Gifford's old shoes. I don't understand it. It wasn't a great night. It was a night going out to the movies. And this ashtray wasn't in the film. No, it wasn't even close to being in the movie. But uh, you like Pink Floyd, right? Yes. Would you want an ashtray off their fucking <laughs> bus and feel any connection? No. It doesn't make sense. Uh, Bruce. Bruce, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Ronnie, uh... I got a couple of Denny's napkins on a uh, McAllister's tea glass I want to send you for Christmas. You know what? Napkins Only... would have been better because at least I could wipe my ass with it, <laughs> which I probably should do with this ashtray. I would never get you napkins, and please don't wipe with my Christmas gifts. I, think I shouldn't even have to say that part out loud. This is not a Christmas gift. This is a symbol of everything that's wrong in our relationship. 1609. Thank Just you. Just big F you 1609. You know what? Here's the thing that I hate. They feel superior to me. I paid much more than sixteen oh nine for that. Why? When it's selling on eBay for sixteen oh nine. Well, I didn't look for it on eBay. Idiot. <laughs> uh, Larry, you're on running fez. Hi, Mister B. Uh, I, you might have to get the cowbell lady to slam me with by proxy, but when Fez was complaining about how the Walton kids got ripped off with bad presents in that first Walton special, it seems like the tables have turned, and now you're bitching about a bad gift when it's obvious that uh, Mr. Wadley gave that to you. It's, all, it's a heartfelt, I mean, you... I know, you it definitely is too. heartfelt, but here's the thing. I beg him every year, let's stop the stupid Christmas gifts. I don't care about it. This is only put out for one reason. And the only reason why I'm bringing it up, to shame you and to stopping us from exchanging gifts. That's well, all I want to do. Well, I have one year to f to fix this. <laughs> How do you figure? You need to fucking fix this now. Why? That is a decent gift, and I should not have to replace it. Slow-mo. You went out on the homeless fucking <laughs> tour. It doesn't mean that you act like those people now. I Bronx Johnny wants to help. Uh, to be fair, though, what did uh, Dave and Earl get you for Christmas? They got me nothing. I got them nothing. That's the way Mr. B wanted it. All right, is that where you want to be over in his corner, Johnny? Is that where you feel no, good? You're, to feel you're suddenly his fucking cut man now? Because <laughs> you're sitting behind that little board? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Are you Yankee security or Fez Watley security? <laughs> what are you working over there? Just a feel a little bad for Fez. And what's the symbol on your hat today? That's uh, Atlanta Braves double-sided. Oh, God. What does this even mean? mean anymore? I have no idea. I think you wear that to a double header. 
<laughs> that ashtray honestly looks like something you would see at a miniature golf course. It doesn't look real. It doesn't look like it's... It actually can be used to ash your cigar in it. It's just a play toy. It is not a toy. It's a fucking embarrassment is what it is. I thought it was a very nice gift. Well, here, do you love it? Yeah. Here. I want you to take it. No, I am not taking that gift back. I want you... No, seriously. I don't want it. No, you're keeping that. I want you to sit there and put it on your, uh, whatever the hell you have over at that fucking Pee Wee Herman house of yours. And when people come in, you explain it to them. No, I am not taking that back from you. That wouldn't be correct. I don't even understand it anymore. Hey, uh, Eli, Eli, you're on a fez. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. I just wanted to know why, uh, why you had to start the, the show with calling Earl Black Earl. You know, you didn't have White Dave come in with Black Earl. Do you think I just made that nickname up today? No, 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 no. No, I've heard it in the past. I yeah. just wonder why you, can, why you can't just call White Dave come in with Black Earl. I call Dave East Side Dave because that's his nickname that I was told before I met him. Black Earl's nickname came before I met him. It has nothing to do with his fucking skin color. Oh, well, okay. Well, that's now who's the fucking racist? Oh, well, yeah, that's me, definitely. I'm right, from West Eli, Virginia. Eli, where are you calling from? That's what I'm saying, West Virginia. We're all racist. Oh, oh yeah. Right yeah. Now. Okay, hey, my, hey, my, my bad, question, brother. My other question was, uh, when Fez is going to start his new show? On I just cut him off. Or where did you get the name Black Girl? Uh, Opie gave me the name. Because I wear black. It is racist, then. (laughs) No, because I wear black all the time, and I happen to be black. Why do you wear black all the time? You're going to have a black T-shirt on under your black shirt and your black coat today. Honestly, I... The only reason, I love this color. I think I look good in this color, and I... How would we know? We've never seen you in orange. I've worn orange... Many, many, many years ago, I used to wear like black and blue and orange and even the hideous green every once in a while. Lavender? Um, no lavender, no. But I, I just like and feel comfortable in the color black. I'd like to see in some day glow, some fluorescence. How about plaid? But don't you see like the, the fact that the guy would think it's uh, racist? This is like an, if an Asian guy just wore rice. It just doesn't fucking make sense. <laughs> I don't even know if that makes sense. <laughs> He's going to wear brown on the left side yeah. and white on the other There's side. A, a little rice suit. No, but the truth of the matter is I just like the color, and I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people, if I see something that I like or like a particular brand of socks, I'll buy more than one of them. You say you're one of those people like anyone else is like you. I don't know anyone who is so monochromatic as you are <laughs> to only wear. First of all, Bronx Johnny's annoying with his hat has to match his pants every day, and which he honestly feels like he's brought style to the world. And But I go and check every day to see if his pants are, or his shoes are the same color as his hat, and they are. But at least that's some thought. You don't think about it anymore. No, I'm a, I'll admit I'm a total fashion retard. I just can't mix and match very well. So Why I just throw in fashion? <laughs> You're just a retard. I think Einstein used to do this. He wore the same pants, same color pants, same shirt. He had like black pants, white shirt, and went and got a ton of them. So he never had to sit and think about anything in the morning. He, he could just think about physics. I can understand that. You try to simplify your life with it. But, I mean, you have to make other decisions. Like, you have to make what you want to eat and stuff. Did he eat, like, the same thing? I think people did that for him. (laughs) But I think he just knew that he had no sense of style, that he's, you know, always thinking about his atoms, whatever the (laughs) fuck is going on. So, finally, he said, just give me something I can put on every day that I don't have to think about it. If you had to lose one color out of the entire color scheme, one just goes away, what color would you pick to get rid of? not crazy about orange. I don't think orange is all that needed. No offense, Dave. <laughs> That's easy for me. I would say red. That's a bit in your but face. But don't you think your hair is actually orange and not red? Uh, I don't know. I guess what? You think it is orange? It's totally yeah. orange. Oh, okay. I thought it was like on, on the verge of being red. I mean, all right, turn around. See that uh, that tag behind you? That thing is red. Right. Or my shirt is... Yeah, your well, shirt is red. Okay. Your hair is actually orange, and your skin is orange. Okay, well then, unfortunately, I guess orange would be mine, too. My color would probably be, like, even though I am this skin color, brown. I hate brown You're pants. You're not brown, brother. I hate brown pants. I hate brown. It is just this 
awful Why color. Why don't you be Brown Earl? I can't be Just try it for a while. <laughs> brown Earl? Like brown rice? Yeah. What about you, Fuzzy? I would probably get rid of gray. Gray does no good for anybody. Well, gray's a nice color. The sky, I love it when the sky's gray. I just love that type of look. It makes the city look better. It's such a peaceful color, I think. Before I, the gray suit is the standard suit now, right? Not even more than black or blue? Yeah. Gray suit? Mm hmm Yeah, before I went all black, my I would always go like a combination of like a gray or blue or... What year did you go all black? But when you weren't doing the gray and blue gimmick? Um, so wow. You went, uh, was that you in the 80s during the fucking New Age days? That was you being neon? Oh, uh, not what the new Jack, the new Jack Swing move will never come back. That was the worst combination of colors ever, and the hairstyles were even worse. Remember the was it the flat top fade? I thought it was a great look. They used to was it the Gumby? Those were it was awful. And then the girls would wear these just giant earrings the size of their heads, with one would be red and one would be yellow. It was the most awful co color combo. But I went all black, I think, in like 91. Really? So this is like 15, 16 years of you. Yeah. Just streamlining black. <laughs> because, I mean, that was the entire changeover. I mean, that's when I started shaving my head. And that's when... What happened? Some girl broke up with you? No. Did they break your heart? I used to get my hair haircut every two weeks. And then one day I just said, you know, get it all off. I want nothing on there. And I went, wow, I really like this. Don't you miss the barbershop? <laughs> or as you call it, the black man CNN? <laughs> The barbershop rules. I mean, if just, we, one of these days, just got to go and put a... I know MTV's done a show on... They did do that show. It ended up being too fake, though. Instead of just being real, they had all kinds of shit set up. And uh, I think Showtime did one, too, which I think was a little bit more raunchier and a little, and a lot more funnier. But, I mean, but the barbershop is like the one place where guys could really be guys. But white people aren't that way. We don't make a big deal about the barbershop. I can't have my barbers yelling all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming at you, you don't know. The, the nice <laughs> elevator music on the background. Right. And, don't really talk to me, in fact. Yeah. We actually get a shampoo in our place. There's chicks there. It's not some uh, fucking macho... This is the odd backstage clubhouse. feeling that you have, yeah. This is like this odd clubhouse type feeling where you can literally talk about anything when openly, I, and that's and the conversation ends when you leave the barbershop. When I'm getting a haircut, I love it when those first couple of minutes of chit chat with the barber is finally over. You tell him what you want. Yeah. He'll maybe mention some sports thing or something like that, or did you see this on the news? And it'll go away if you don't engage him. It'll go away because I like to just. Sit there and get my hair cut. Oh, I, 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 I see. I don't even wait for it to go away. I go just cut my hair, sports fan. I fucking <laughs> talk for a living. I'm not here to fucking go over to Mets fucking trades with you. I just want the hair cut and out of here. Black people treat the barbershop like a bar. I mean, white people argue about sports and boxers and music. That's where we do it. I don't know why you right. have to get a shave and a haircut. I'm so argue about bad. who is better, Joe Lewis or Muhammad <laughs> Ali. Well, well, you know, he's coming, all right, now you're going back to the Eddie Murphy bit. Yeah, totally Everything is down in Eddie Murphy bit. <laughs> His mama called him Clay. I'm going to call him Clay. I don't see how you support a family, tell you the truth. <laughs> Cutting black people's hair all day. Because you know the tips aren't flying. The tips, they do tip. I used to tip. How, what, a quarter? A buck. And with all the talking, how many heads are getting done during the day? Three? <laughs> no, but you got to get there. I mean, and the place is packed every day. You, you'll have of course it's packed. There's no movement. <laughs> the fucking backup is unbelievable. And it's got the best TV on the block at the barbershop. But Fez has got a point. Do you want to discuss world fucking events? I mean, you don't want to do that when you go to the DMV. <laughs> you know, you just want to get your shit and get out of there. You don't want to start hearing about the... Uh, I don't know about this Carrie Underwood. I don't think I don't think she's going to go all the way on Idol. You just want your shit and get out. There are people that want to have conversations with you, and I just don't want to have them. Yeah. Any cab driver who wants to start a conversation, I don't want to listen to them. Bro, that hasn't happened since 58 in this town. <laughs> There's no fucking guy driving a cab here that could hold a conversation with you. Well, at least not in English, anyway. They're always on the phone. They always got a phone in their ear and they're talking all the time. Some deli shop owners, you know, the guys who working behind the counter, they want to talk to you for a long time. Doormen want to talk to you. Yeah. They always are ready to fucking stop and break off a piece of conversation. <laughs> I'm freezing. <laughs> I gotta get back inside. 
Think the eggs got a shot this year? I can't discuss the weather every single day with the doorman. That's all they want to talk about. I hate it when I go I- into my apartment building. The doorman's there. We're going to start talking if the elevator's not on the first floor. If I have to wait for that elevator, forget it. That's just too much room for a conversation to start. Hey, Marianne, you're on Run of Fez. Happy New Year's, boys. I have to make a point. I really love how this Dave is just trashing Fezzy's gift. Yeah, I noticed that. Big as he can, right? And I was wondering what happened to his spectacular electronic gift that he was going to buy you. What did you get? Yeah, what happened there, Dave? You were going to get me something electronic. A gadget, I remember. I have in my book bag. (laughs) If I can go fetch it for a second. (laughs) Yes, go fetch your book bag when you're on your way down to the cement pond. I can't believe he has a book bag. What did he do? Just run here from the depression? I don't even understand what goes on in this place anymore. All right, what do you got for me? This is uh, a great <laughs> item. Yeah. You can, can't can get this anywhere. So it's just out. In fact, if you go to the Nintendo store, it's sold out. Yeah. It's a uh, portable Nintendo DS. You can play your Mario Karts. You can play everything on it. Oh, this for me? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I guess. I'll put that over here right next to Fez's gift. <laughs> See which one looks better. Fez, this would have been seriously something nice for you to get me. Who got you this, RonFez.net? Yeah. <laughs> and you're giving it to me? I have to. All right. I have to. And you, um, since you did this for me, yeah. all right, you know how RonFez.net got me that beautiful, gorgeous poster of The Last Walls? Yeah. I'm going to put this game right next to it, right wow. underneath of it, where I have it hanging up in my house. Man. That way I always know where to find the game. Shit. All right. So that's something nice. Fezzy, you can take a fucking page out of this kid's book. What, and give you something that I already own? Uh, rather than give me something Touch Shore used to own <laughs> and not even care about. He used to buy him by the gross. I would. Yeah, uh, send me another 244 <laughs> ashtrays. I would still pick my gift that I gave you over Dave's. you got to be fucking kidding me. No. There's not another person that would. Other than a Bronx Johnny, your little fucking cut, man. And the graphics on the Game Boy are tons better than the graphics, the graphics on the cigar <laughs> or on the ashtray. I mean, the touch short yeah, lettering. Really? is not called graphics when it's just stenciled on an ashtray. Well, the touch short lettering is all crooked. It's... it's... It really does look like he got done by a retarded kid in Jersey. I think that shows you how authentic it is. It's probably handmade. Why would anyone hand make an ashtray? It was probably so long ago that was as far as the technology went. I'm just telling you the truth. I don't want this, Fess. And I'm going to sit it here. You have to take that back home with you. You leave it in here, something could happen to it. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping. Someone will steal it. <laughs> Some elderly fucking bar fan will steal it. This takes me back to the days. For some reason, I thought it was bigger, too, because I, I thought it would be like the size, <laughs> you know, like a, almost like a, um, like a, something just a lot larger. But Here's the, what I don't understand. We go out to a movie, a documentary. So he thinks I want an ashtray... From the thing in the documentary. That's what I don't... Yeah. Out of all the memories me and this guy have, this is the one he wants me thinking about. <laughs> it really seems insane now. That we went <laughs> to insane. a... It seriously is. <laughs> it seems almost stalker-ish or just bizarre. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Aaron. Aaron, you're on running Fez. Hey, I was going to say, at the very least, uh, Fez, he could have thrown in uh, one of his uh, snugglers. To go along with the asteroid. Which, by the way, went nowhere. <laughs> and I think that they're mm-hmm. they're closing their doors. I would have the feeling, I know we haven't heard from anyone, but I would have the feeling there was a lot of disappointed kids come Christmas morn when they didn't have snugglers under their t- under their trees. Well, if they need to, they're selling, they're selling them ten for a buck right now at Walmart. <laughs> Along with uh, 50 Tootsie Shores ashtrays. <laughs> that is not a Walmart gift, Eastside Dave. He's ripping you. I mean, me, I'm just trying to point something out. He's fucking taunting, though. No, I'm just pointing it out. Pointing out what? Because <laughs> his shortcomings is a, uh, as somebody who uh, doesn't know how to buy Christmas. Who else did you disappoint this year? I don't think I disappointed well, anyone this year. What'd you get your pop? 
I got my pop. I got him a suit. Holy fuck, I'd love to have a brand new suit. Here's uh, JD, you're on Manifest. What'd you get? Is that the funeral suit? <laughs> 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 hey, don't worry about a thing. <laughs> you're going to go out looking like a million bucks. Oh, God, that's the worst. <laughs> is there a back to the suit? Or is it just the front? It just doesn't um, come with shoes. Uh, JD, you're on Manifest. <laughs> How we doing, fellas? Uh, listen, Ron, you always listen to something. <laughs> You, you went the whole show yesterday and didn't hit that redheaded shit dick once with the cowbell. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the cowbell thing is over. I, I, you know what? It's starting to seem like it's too violent to me. <laughs> uh, Dave is an employee here. He's not great, but he gives his heart to this show. Yeah, thank well, you. Why should he be hit with cowbell after cowbell every day? Yeah, or at least, yeah, I mean, it's, or just let me recuperate. Maybe. By the way, that whack bag cowbell, I was just chucking it around for fun. I'd end up killing you with that. Yeah, oh, yeah. The no one? That's more lethal than a lawn dart. Yeah. I like throwing an anvil at somebody. Yeah. That thing looks like a combination cowbell barbed wire that's got such jagged sides on it. Yeah, and it's really heavy. I mean, you could crush an ashtray with that thing. <laughs> Don't. Don't. <laughs> Have you noticed all Fez's gifts are so old school, like ashtrays, old suits, and a, qui <laughs> and a quilt, and the quilt, remember? Where did an old suit come <laughs> from this? You got your dad a suit suit. Had <laughs> <laughs> a big fucking chain hanging down. And a quilt was one of his ideas. <laughs> it was a brand new suit. Was it? Yes. Not like I went to the thrift store and picked it up. Looking for something in his very stout size. Now, did you have him measured, or did you just buy it off the rack? It was one that he went and picked out. He thinks everyone is George Burns. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? Cigar suits and quilts. quilts. Cigar suits and quilts. <laughs> Everybody's fucking, the whole world is elderly vaudeville to this guy. Why don't we go down 21 Club, Fuzzy? There, you got old ash <laughs> we got they got old ashtrays down there. I would only go down there to get you a lawn jockey. We actually should go egg. You know what? You're getting white this. people are so scared of black people. Uh, we ought to go down there for dinner one night. I would love and to do that. Shows, yeah. Why well, don't you grab that credit card of yours? We'll do it any day. <laughs> Elo's taking us out today, right? Yeah, we're going out with Elo. Everybody, uh, let's crush that fucking meal. Seriously. Uh, Double steak him. Oh, yeah. Double mm. steak the son of a bitch. I'm going to steak him up. <laughs> I'll have the steak for two, please. Appetizers, <laughs> desserts. You got to do all the courses. Fez, wear your fucking uh, coat with the rubber uh, pockets. <laughs> the Jimmy Schubert <laughs> coat. Jimmy Schubert would wear fucking... A, a, a coat, he had rubber pockets in it, and he would steal fucking soup. He would literally steal soup. It's a brilliant idea. Yeah, well, you know, he's a brilliant guy. You know that from that Sears commercial. <laughs> uh, Riley, Riley, you're a run of Fez. Hey, buddy. Hey, how are you, Riley? Good, how's it going? Um, I just wanted to call Dave out. I can't believe he regifted the RonFez.net gift. Well, I was in a de desperate gonna, situation. And you're calling out Fez because he, he gave an ashtray to Ronnie, but you didn't even put any money out. That's true, and I'm going to tell you right now, Riley, I'm keeping this thing. Well, let me tell you, I... You should keep it. Wait a second, it more Riley. Him. I bought five games. Ron gets the whole package. He doesn't just With get... With the five games? He gets the five games in there as well. So that's about $150 worth of games he's getting. But I'm going to let it go a lot cheaper on eBay. Seriously, it's going to be a nice deal for somebody. Plus, that comes really from my heart. Because I've been playing that thing for a week straight. Well, it came out of your book bag. Yeah, you're lucky you didn't get a Pop-Tart, Ron. And Why do you call it a book bag? Are you carrying books around? Uh, I've got it a probably couple has of... a trapper keeper in it. Yeah, some folders. Oh, by the way, Riley, we had a message left for you. Did you? Yeah. I have no problem with Riley Luck. I don't even know who the fucking cunt is. But for any of those fucking mods... To fucking ban me over some bitch that has been around for four fucking months takes a lot of fucking balls. And for Mikey Boy to give me a fucking message that says, I'm too tired right now, I'll deal with you in the morning, fuck that shit. Fuck that. You deal with me now. I only fucking call in. I only fucking answer the show. I've only been friends with fucking Eastside Dave for six fucking years, for me to fucking be pushed aside and to still be banned in the morning is bullshit. 
is absolute fucking horseshit. I don't fucking matter. Like, I don't fucking add anything. Some people that come out to those fucking Ron and Fez fucking parties come out and fucking want to say hi to me. Well, Riley, you're going to have to dinner with that guy? I, I can't wait for him to whisper sweet nothings into my ear. Yeah, it sounds dangerous, dinner. doesn't I'm it? I'm requesting him to say that. All right, Riley, sorry you gave your gift away. No, it's okay. Hey, listen, I also wanted one more thing to add. Mm -hmm. um, you just want, may want to check the authenticity of that ashtray because supposedly only the maroon ones are authentic. So it says he got jerked. That's, that's kind of wrong. Well, this definitely isn't real. I'm really starting to agree with Irish Alki here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Fezzy, beginning to see you. his side of things. No, Fezzy, I Fezzy, love I, love you. I want you to look at this. I don't want you this. to get screwed over. And I want you to be totally honest. Is this ashtray 60 years old? I thought it was. Yes. Now look at it. Doesn't it look a little too shiny to be 60 years old? It's not beaten down at all? I will, I will admit this. It's very well preserved. And you would think, how many times would this have went through a dishwasher if it was a bar ashtray? Maybe it was gently hand washed back in the 50s. Even then, I don't know whether you've ever seen uh, the way this lettering would take a washing. I bet if we washed it every day here for two weeks, you would see those letterings fade. I'm beginning to think I might have gotten taken on this. You got taken or I did, thinking that you're my partner and that you're going to give me something fantastic this year. It would have been me. I'm the one who fell into their trap. I'm the laughing stock of my family and now my show. <laughs> so believe me, if you set out to really crush me, hey, Fezzi, congratulations. Perfect gift. That was not my intent. Oh, uh, look who it is. It's our buddy Mikey Boy. Mikey Boy. Hey, guys. Ron, I, first of all, I want to uh, hope you uh, have a good time with the Nintendo DS. And I want to let Dave know, no Christmas uh, gift for you next year for him. Wow. Oh, Wait, aren't you happy that now Ron's getting pleasure from I got a week's well, worth of we, pleasure. We, we yeah. put a lot of effort and time trying to figure out exactly what would be the perfect gift for you, and I think it was. And then you turned around and gave it away. I love it. I hope enjoys it now. I truly love that machine. And now Ron's going to get a piece of my heart and great technology. I can turn it on for you if you'd like. Yeah, sure. It's uh, I want to turn it on before I get it to eBay. And everybody else is going to get bigger gifts next year to compensate for the big gift you're not getting. You know what, Mikey Boy? You will never be able to top what you did for me this year. Oh, that was you. unbelievable. Thank you. I, I'm glad. I, I, we, we put a lot of thought into that one. It was so. absolutely what I consider is the anti-Fez gift. <laughs> it was so thoughtful, so hip. Wow, this game is fun. Yeah. That's that's Mario Kart, Mr. B. That's maybe the most fun game in the history of Nintendo. Well, I'm throwing that one out because I'm not four. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Mikey boy. Thanks, see you guys. Take care, Mikey boy. Well, you pissed some people off today, huh, Dave? I didn't. I didn't try to. I didn't say you tried to. I just said that you did. I guess so. Then. Yeah. I mean, if you hit someone with your car, you go. Oh, I didn't mean to. Yeah. Doesn't mean that the guy's leg isn't broken. All right, I pissed him off. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I pissed him off. I thought you said piss and moan. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you piss and moan. Uh, Oscar, Oscar, you're on a fez. Hey, hey, how you doing there, Ron? Yeah. Um, I think that, that gif was intended for Black Ron, not for uh, you. You know, I wish the Black Ron nickname would go away. Seriously. It really annoys me. That's another thing that I am sorry for as well. I know I got family. Yeah. And they, uh... They're not as progressive as I am. I'm going to just put it out there that way. They can't be happy about it. No, they're not. First of all, they're upset. My dad wanted to beat you with a stick over this Tut Short thing. Well, tell him not to, please. Mm. Maybe you should get Mr. B's dad's suit. It then. really is. Uh, the lettering isn't uh, lined up properly. No. You think I should put this on eBay? Yes. You honestly think I could go get more than 1609 for it? No, I don't think you should put that on eBay. Mm. That's a gift to you. I would hate to wake up and see that on eBay. Oh, so you do go to eBay? Oh, I've gone to eBay before, but I Thank didn't get that you. off of eBay. Thank you. That wasn't an eBay gift. I paid a lot more than the $16.09 for that thing. Highway 1609, Fez drove down. What's that even mean? There's no highway called 1609. I think in some parts of the country. No, you're really grasping at things to try to slam me here. I've never heard of a highway over a thousand. <laughs> Smaller states. Why would they have higher numbers? Uh, larger, Texas, Alaska. 
Dayquil. <laughs> so you don't know what you said, Dayquil? <laughs> Hi, I'm Dayquil. <laughs> yeah. Last night on the FM show, you fucking said some kind of crazy... Sh oh, he got into his own government, governor and made no sense at all. There was a point where you yelled out crazy shit last night. Uh, Fez yelled something that I didn't even understand. I think it stopped being our language. And then also, Earl started yelling about Nixon when nobody knew what he was talking about. I was out of my skull. I just heard Nixon, and I just have so much pent up resentment towards Richard Nixon. Why do you Why do you hate Richard Nixon? He sle He freed the slaves. The Lincoln freed the slaves. Nixon oh. was an awful president. I thought it was Nixon that freed the slaves. Earl was like two when Nixon was in office. Uh, How, well, what, what do you care about? What's your him? beef, Earl? He had remember that little plan called Urban Renewal that kind of blew up in everyone's faces. I mean, why he, Why don't you want the hood looking a little nicer? Spiffed up. No, it was going to be spiffed up with the black people moved out of it. That was the whole urban renewal plan. Well, it's working for New Orleans. He did free trade with China. That allowed them to make uh, Tutsur's ashtrays for Nicola <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Fez. You are an ass and you will pay for this. What are you going to do to him? I will think of something. <laughs> I will think of something. It's not, it's not going to strike fear into people. Uh, hey, Bob, Bob, you're on a fez. Lush to buddy. Let's go over to our buddy Turtle from Whack Bag. I love the turtle. How you doing, Turt? Hey, buddy. Happy yeah. New Year. I was just calling to find out how Westside liked her, uh, you know, and to thank Dave for his hands and knees ass out apology that he gave us. He really did uh, take his ass out last day here to apologize to everybody. And that apology was rescinded. And, uh,. It uh, didn't go well with the, you know, she finally listened to a few of the clips. Yeah. And I had to sleep oh, on the chair no. last night. What do you mean sleep on a chair? Oh, Sitting I mean, up? Yeah, I don't have a couch. My apartment's too small for a couch, so I have a little, you know, bad rocking chair that I had to sleep on because she heard uh, the clip about the stripper. Yeah. And now I would never tell her when I go out to strip clubs. Yeah. So thank you, Whack Bag. The You're welcome. No problem. The strain in the relationship no is finally... There. So she, so you slept in a chair. Yeah. In your own fucking house. Yes. I don't understand that. And I'm like dying of sickness and everything. I needed the bed. Had to sleep up and uh, upright in the rocking chair last night. Mm. You brought the whole thing on yourself, Dave. Just glad we could help you out with your relationship, make things truthful, and everything out in the open. Peace. Uh, Rocky, you're on a face. Hey, I uh, just wanted to uh, tell you guys, I hate to agree agree with Eastside Dave, but there is a 1960 highway in Houston, Texas. I'll send you into the big-ass prize closet. Dave, you pulled that one out of your ass. I apologize to you. Thank you. Hold on, buddy. We'll get you a copy of the Nine Live Sampler from Robert Plant, courtesy of Rhino Entertainment. You can check that out on rhino.com. Once again, I don't understand anything there is about Texas. It is just one wacky place. It's the big state, though. They do, they do things bigger down there. Tell that to Alaska, my friend. Tell that to Alaska. There is no other state that says don't mess with us. You never hear anyone saying don't mess with Iowa. No, it's don't mess with Delaware. They're a fucking. Oh. They're like a little chicken hawk. They're very, very feisty. Oh, no, they're Delahoo, Delawat, Delaware. Uh, Teresa, you're on a fez. Hello? Yeah. I play my children's DS like four hours a day. I'm playing it right now. And then what do you do? Eat Viking in? No. And I do homework with them, but really, during the day, I play this nonstop. What's your favorite game you play? Well, it's Mario. I'm just Mario 64. I did that. I have three stars on my name. Now I'm up to Yoshi Island. <laughs> All right. I'll have to start being friends with you, Teresa. Yeah. Now that I got a brand new one. I had the yeah. feeling the kids are what eating candy bars for dinner. <laughs> what color did you get? Uh, white. Oh, okay. Why? What, what color is yours? I have a pink and a black one. Oh. Is something nice. wrong there? Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm All right, honey. All right, bye. Peace. Now, did your little emergency test go off okay, uh, Earl? Yes. And it didn't uh, bring down the house the way you were trying to tell me in our little pre-show meeting? No, it did not. There was no reason for me to even care about it? You're absolutely right on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, hey, Dan. Dan, you're on a fez. I lost you, buddy. Um, here's uh, Captain Bag. Captain Bag, you're on a fez. Hey, buddies. Love you guys. Thanks, man. Hey, um, 
I'm hoping to hear the cowbell on this one, Ronnie. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I need to call bullshit on Dave's gift that he gave you. Why is that? If I remember right, on uh, you guys' last show, he was so excited when he got that Nintendo game, but then he also put a shout-out to his mom saying, I think, Mom, I might get two because he put that on his list for his mom. So I'm thinking he was kind of uh, being false and giving that up to you because he's probably got one back at home that he got from his mom. No, I don't care. I, don't, uh, I mean, I think it's embarrassing that a guy who's 29 has a Christmas list for his mom like he was eight. No, and that absolutely is not the case. Plus, Ron can see that this is played with and everything. And what I did was, yeah, Mario Kart. It's <laughs> awesome. And then what I did was I returned my mom's thing and got games with it. Uh, David, you're on running Fez. Uh, the guy from here uh, said that there's a highway 1906 or 1960. 1960. It's a liar. There's, there's not? No, how. There's, a, there's a rural route. There's not no highway. All right, yeah, I, I need to take that prize back then. Wait. Because you didn't yell a rural, rural route, Dave. And that, if, if that was it, I would have backed you up 100%. That's semantics. No, it's not. Dave, you suck. <laughs> a rural route is nowhere near a highway. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'd never even heard of a rural route before today. It must be like a service road. It must look like that new Quentin Tarantino movie when you're driving down there. <laughs> Sounds very highway-ish to me. Or, or you're going to end up at the Teddy Twister with a bunch of vampires <laughs> trying to kill you in the middle of the night. I think I think it's close enough. No, it's not close enough. All right, maybe I'll send them in the big-ass prize closet and give them this. There you go. God. That uh, song almost sounds like the caveman should go riding by on the... Uh, <laughs> On the little sidewalk, on the moving sidewalk. Sportscaster Jim Lampley, he was arrested in California last night for beating up his girlfriend. The one with no fingers? No, that's his ex-wife. That's Bree Walker. He's not with her anymore? No, I guess... No, how many times I had to watch TV shows where they expounded on their love <laughs> for his fucking deformed wife, and now he's not with her? Yeah, I guess they divorced uh, a few years ago. I had no idea. That yeah, they, the they divorced in 2000. Oh, that far away? Yeah. All right, that long ago? Wow. Now who's she with? They don't. Uh, they didn't say who this girlfriend was. They didn't give out the name. But they did say, they hinted that it could have been Brie, allegedly, because Lampley and her are still close. So. Well, it'd be easy to beat her up. She's got no hands, right? Yeah, yeah but I wouldn't want those claws coming at me. If she's going to fight back, those uh, wrists with no fingers on the end, those things have got to be like hammers coming at you. If he gets into a fight with her, I don't. Know, I think a balled up fist is going to hurt more than a wrist. I. She's got nothing to lose with her little stumps. She can just let him fly, you know. Yeah. If anything, she's going to headbutt. Yeah. Oh, okay. If anything, she'll come just flying in like an Irishman. That's the problem. She would. Bree Walker would never be able to get a grip on uh, Jim Lampley. Like if like she was. Dick? Like if she was going to try to grab him or something to like stop him from hitting her. Yeah. Yeah. She's never going to, you know. So how bad did he beat this chick up who they're not even saying who she is? Um. And they, why won't they say her name? They're just not. You know, if, if it's considered some crimes, the victim I thought it was only rape was the only crime that they don't give out the name. Yeah. They it, give out the name of every murder victim. It wasn't sexual, but it was definitely domestic abuse. No. And let me tell you something, brother. Anytime you hit a woman, it's sexual. Is there ever a time when you hit a woman? Yeah. Like back. Or cold pizza. Cold pizza for dinner? <laughs> push, push, push. <laughs> I would imagine the woman that's sitting home playing with her kids in Nintendo DS all day instead of cleaning the house, she probably takes a pop every now and again. I think the only time to hit a woman is when she's yours. I don't think you go out hitting other people's women. I have n I have not hit a woman since I was a kid when I was would fight with my sister. That would be about it. You haven't fucked a woman either. It has nothing to do with it. What you don't do with women, we could make a big fucking uh, thing on. Obviously, you got to protect yourself, right? I would. Th Any woman punching you? Yeah, I mean, you can hit her back in the face. I I can see nothing wrong with that. That's called self defense. Right in the mouth. Girls hate that more than if you would hit him in the nose. See, I'm progressive. I believe women are equal. Get in the ring, honey. Get yeah. in the fucking ring. But does self-defense ever play with the cops? I mean, when the guy... When yeah, the, sure it does. When the police show up and the guys hit the woman back... Or what if she has a fucking knife? 
Or uh, a gun. Yeah, you would have to disarm her. Right. Well, what are you going to do? I get you would try to grab it and get get her to drop the weapon. Exactly. Snap that fucking wrist. Does playing sports count? Like, if you can you play tackle football, can you hit them just as hard as you hit a guy? No, you let them run for touchdowns every time they have the ball. If the fucking Cowboys come up with this plan, they will end up winning the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> if they just get a woman fullback. you got to treat women equal. Good. I broke my mom's thumb one time on uh, Turkey Day. Up your ass? It was up your ass? Is that what you call it when you and your mom are fucking around? It's Turkey Day? You no, drop your pants? No. Lay on a fucking plate on the table? This was football. This wasn't like sex of any kind. Oh. Yeah. That's weird. So you're playing football against your mom? Uh, 1992, Thanksgiving uh, Day McDonald's football game. Uh -huh. And she <clears throat> it was a great play-action pass. Uh, they fake handoff to my brother, who's a cross-country star. My mm -hmm. mom... Right over the middle. She goes deep. Yeah, she's... First of all, you, you can't let her go across the middle. You I was say. fooled by the run. Right. My brother's a you know, cross-country star in Dartmouth University. I got I to respect him. Right. My mom catches the ball in 20. Going she's deep. going 15. I don't stop playing, even though I went for the fake. I, I hustled. I yelled teed her. Smacked her right into the bushes, and she totally, she broke her thumb and kind of dislocated her wrist. No, was this tackle you played against your mom? No, it was two-hand touch. But there was no way for me to get her before she went to the end zone without diving. So the force of my dive really did end up me tackling. Now, what did your brothers do? Go crazy on you? Uh, the brothers on my on her team yeah. wanted to kick my ass. And then the brothers on my team were like, hey, it was a clean hit. He had to dive to get her. So it was terrible. you got to look insane tackling your own mother that hard that you break her thumb. But here's the thing. Is she playing the fucking game? Oh, yeah. She's out so there. What, now, what should he do? Knock her after her? He should, but, I mean, you could knock her out of bounds or something. That's what he did. I tried to, but there was no way for me he to get her. her out of the bounds into the bushes. Exactly. And there was I couldn't get her without diving, and just the force of my dive ended up crushing her. The kid doesn't want to give up six. you got to respect that. Yeah. But to me, that's like playing with a little kid. you got to hold back but some, or I'm, you're going to kill somebody. Then why play? If you're going to hold back. But here's your problem, Toast. Do not, you, you're not, pl you're playing defensive back. You're playing the fucking receiver. I know. Forget about anything that's happening on the play action. Stupid. My head wasn't in the play. Uh, Steve, Steve, you're on running face. Hey. Yeah. I agree with you, but you, Ron, you said that if a woman wants to hit like a man, she better be able to take a punch like a man. Yeah. All right, peace. Plus, I know this is going to seem odd to you people. I have met some women who are like, no, mm, hit me. <laughs> I know it sounds terrible. I know that I've, I've lived the nightlife a little bit. But sometimes they'll say, come on, pussy. Wind it up. And you'd be surprised that you start fucking throwing in. You know, you're throwing fucking hands at that point. They start to taunt. What kind of women are these? Uh, I'm going to give you... A little clue here, bad girls. What they are, are bad girls. Uh, Tally, you're in front of Fez. Hey, bitches. What's up, Ron? What do you say, man? I, uh, I, uh, when I was in high school, I had a girl at a dance. Sure you she did. She kicked me in the balls. She need you in the balls? She kicked me in the balls three times. How come? Each time. Oh, because I wouldn't dance with her. That's how, that's how stupid it was. And, uh, each time that she kicked me, when I went down, I went up to go after her, and my buddies grabbed me, and they, you know, you can't do it, you can't do it. After the third time, kicked me after I got up. Uh, she tried actually kicking me a fourth time, and I grabbed her leg, and I smashed her knee, and I pulled her in, and I just clocked her. And uh, the cops came, and I spent the night in the quake because I hit her, and nothing happened to her. Now, what, what, what state are you from? Minnesota. And out there in high school, girls are still hitting boys. Oh, God. Yeah. No. I had no idea. At the barn dance. Well, this, but then again, this is, yeah, this is northern Minnesota. Oh, way up there. Almost Canada. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're like 20 minutes away from Canada. Yeah. You're practically, I mean, you barely are even fucking homo sapiens up that way. <laughs> you're still some kind of missing links. All right. That makes a lot of sense to me. The girl worked part-time as a trapper. Just a tough broad. Uh, Jim, uh, Jimmy, you're on running Fez. Hey, what's up, guys? Dick Holder, 451. Yeah, they are. Face, face. Hey, uh, 
Yeah, my ex old lady uh, found out I was cheating on her with her best friend. Yeah. And uh, came at me with a baseball bat, and when she swung it, I ducked and had a reflex, just popped her in the mouth. And she called the police, and they arrested her. They arrested her for swinging a bat at you? Yeah. <laughs> she, they said I was just defending myself. Yeah, I think that you are just defending yourself. Everybody's got a right to defend themselves. Or if she says something about your mom, of course, you're not going to fucking take that either. Jim Lampley, he may be a hero for all we know. We don't have the whole story. Obviously, it looks bad up front. He punched a woman with no hands. Sure, that's not... He beat up a deformed woman. Right away, it doesn't sound good. We don't have all the details. We don't know if it was Bree Walker, his handless ex-wife. Really? Yeah. I'm just going to assume that was. <laughs> it makes for a better story. It makes it a better picture in your mind. Rob, you're on Ronnie Fez. Hey, guys. I thought I'd uh, settle this uh, dispute about the 1960 uh, issue mm -hmm. once and for all. Good. It's not a rural route or a highway. It's a farm-to-market road. FM 1960. Yeah, take that price well, away. Uh, a farm-market ro road, that doesn't count as anything. FM. That's a dirt road. FM 1960. FM yeah. 1960. FM, no static at all. It's a trail. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. you go. So it's not, it's not a real road, right, Rob? Uh, it's a long, real road. So it's, it's, it's a FM 19 farm to market road that's been around forever. It's not a highway. It's not a rural route. Just a long road. All these other guys calling in don't know. How could something know be called a farmer's market road, though? That's where the uh, it's it's one of the old old highways before there were really paved roads. Sure, like Apaches used, used to. Them. Yeah, it's an old Apache yeah. path. Right there now it's go. a jogging path. Do you know that Broadway here in Manhattan used to be an Indian path, and that's why it's like one of the few roads that you know isn't set up on the grid. The way that it runs right. is kind of bizarre because that's the path that the Indians used to take. I never knew that. No, oh, you don't want to hang around with me, Touch Shore. You'll find out all this <laughs> historical stuff. I do hang around with you. Do you? Yeah. Do you listen, though? Do you listen when I say I don't want a bad Christmas? <laughs> That's why I tried to get you something nice. <laughs> don't hit that on the microphone. It could break. Why? Because it's not good quality? Uh, Chris. Chris, you're on Fez. Hello. Yeah. What's up, Ronnie? Chris, over on Long Island. What do you say, uh, Happy pal? New Year to you guys. Same deal. Um, I was upstate New York in college about 14 years ago, and I'm about 6'5", 330 pounds at the time, built like an offensive lineman to get you a visual. And uh, a girl at a bar spit a whole cup of beer in my face. I was three sheets to the wind, about a bottle and a half of Captain Morgan's away from uh, passing out. And uh, I just laid this broad out freaking hard as I could. And... Uh, Really got some great laughs in the bars because she was a real county upstate trash. No teeth. I didn't sure. knock any out. But, uh, wow, really bad. Spending the night in the jail and uh, assault charge that ended up getting dropped because she wasn't smart enough to press charges. But <laughs> close one. But I, I knocked her about 16 feet across the bar. You see, great. Fezzi, so it does happen. Sometimes even a guy, big guy like Chris, has to knock a woman on his, on his ass. 16 feet across the bar? But, see, I believe yeah. in equality. She actually landed on top of the stage where the band played. was about 12 foot with a 3 foot step up on the fly. Not exaggerating. I wish it was. Kind of embarrassing. Yeah, it is a little embarrassing. And luckily it didn't make it to YouTube. Or you would have felt bad for the rest of uh, your life. And she goes flying into the drum kit. Big Tim, you're on running Fez. All right, well, Chris is my fucking hero because I'm the exact same size. He could be my twin brother. I'm 6'5", 330. I used to boss at a bar on Long Island. And I was one of those weirdos that likes girls that are a little crazy. Mm -hmm. so my girl got a little drunk one night, went to throw her out of the bar. She winds up and fucking decks me right in the face in front of everybody. My eye instantly swells shut, and it's like the whole bar, like the needle came off the record. Everybody just staring at me, and this little girl, five foot two, 109 pounds, just about knocks me out fucking cold, and I'm just standing like a doof. What do you do? You got to drop her. You got to, you know, especially if you're a bouncer. Yeah, I'm a, I guess I'm technically a fag now. That's it. I'm out. All right, peace. Double axe handle her. When someone's shorter <laughs> than you, boom. It's easy just to come down. Interesting. Yeah. Hands clam? Yeah, hands clam. Uh, Robert, you're on Run Fez. Hey, boy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Bree Walker, she has a eterodactyly where her thumb and her first two fingers are fused together, and then her other two are fused together. 
so they they're like jabbing implements. So I mean, if that like lobster that, claws. Yeah, you gotta take her down, man. She could hurt you. It's like fighting a human lobster. Fucking Lampley, HBO's fucking sports. He knows how to bob and weave. I'm sure he's trained a little bit in the gym over the years. So she's basically, she starts growing nails on those fused fingers. She's coming at you with little knives. She's got like steak knives on the ends of her wrists. So you're saying no circumstances, Fez, would you ever hit a woman? No. I, I, I can't imagine a circumstance where I would hit a woman. I would draw... All right, let me give you one. Let's say you have your own business. You're running out of your, your house. Let's just say uh, selling party packages. And let's say some of this got up front to you. And you're the one who caught it, put it together... You're dealing this thing and at great risk to yourself, to your own freedoms. Now suddenly you turn around and what happens? Every time you take a nap, this little coke whore is fucking stealing bindle after bindle. And if you don't come up with the money, Fuzzy, perhaps somebody who, that you owe money to right. is not so friendly. And they'll cut your fucking head and hands off over this. You got to fucking wake her up to the way things are going. You keep your fucking whore nose out of that product. Gee, I never thought of such extreme circumstances. Oh, I think of it as running the mill. I think this is business operating. Because if she doesn't fucking respect you, you think any of your fucking customers will? And I know you've been blowing them anyway, you little fucking whore. You'll fucking blow anybody for two rails. Is this still hypothetical? No, I'm going to fucking get on a plane right now and go back and finish this. I'm still pissed. Anyway, these things happen. That's why I should be a judge. I'd be able to go through all this. It's always the guy that's going to end up getting put in jail. I don't most, think so. Not anymore. Most of it's the time. It's 2007. Don't you believe in equality? Yes. You act like it's 58. Yes, I believe anyone should be, uh, you know, anyone that commits assault should get put in jail. But I'm, I'm thinking that most of the time they're going to take the lady's word and the guy's going to end up in jail. Ladies? So you wouldn't believe? So you don't believe that any man can hit a woman, so even if his fucking bindles are missing? Which, believe me, I tell you, when Friday comes around, I better have that fucking money. No, I'll kill everybody in this fucking place. Uh, uh, now I'm, I'm flashing back. I'm fucking. Forget that. Let's just move on with this brief thing. It's probably not the best example. So what if like oh, China? What if like China, China doll, whatever, the professional wrestler, what if she was picking on like someone smaller, like uh Michael J. Fox? Could he then punch her? You know you, you know what I'm saying? Doesn't he have, doesn't he have polio or something? He's yeah. got Parkinson's. Parkinson's. So what if she like spit on him? Or even what if she kicked him in the shins? Could he punch her back? He's a man. Could I don't he think he could. Back? I don't think he's got the skills right now. I don't even think he could during the uh, during the secret of my success age. He's a tiny little man. I'm that's, talking about someone who's small. could be anyone, not Michael J. Fox. That's when he was at his prime. But the thing is, if you believe in equality, you treat everybody the same. Yeah. Then Lampley, obviously, is a modern man. He is a man who's living out there, living the example of men and women being equal. I can't wait to get more details about this. Jim Lampley arrested last night in California for beating up his chick. Uh, one weird fact in the story, they said that he also was charged with trying to prevent someone from going on the witness stand. They didn't name the trial. I can show you the uh, the article. Yeah, the go post. get the article. Lampley's caught up in the dark side, huh? Yeah, it sounds like Lampley had one really bad night for himself. You know, the, there's not much boxing anymore. You don't see that many fights, you know, that many name fights. He gets the Olympics every four years. Maybe it's just too much time on his hands. He's still doing the HBO things, right? Yeah, I believe so. I'm pretty sure he still does HBO sports. I mean, the guy should have money put away. He also does the stuff, for, I think, for real sports with Brian Gumble too. So he's, he's always working. He's great. He does boxing. He does the Olympics. He, I mean, I think he's a great broadcaster. He always interviews... I never liked him. Really? I love him and Larry Merchant together. HBO Boxing, Saturday nights. Larry Merchant I've never been a big fan of. Really? Yeah. I love those guys. I think they're a great team. Well, and Lampley seems more like a game show host. Kind of swarmy. Kind of what? Swarmy. I'd love to fucking find this dictionary of yours. Char uh, Charlie, you're on Run of Fez. 
Yeah, I don't think Fez would ever strike a woman. Uh, he never beat up Liza Minnelli for stealing David Guest. Yeah. Say Liza Minnelli can hit a woman and nobody complains about it. David Guest is still having headaches from his Liza Minnelli beatings. Anthony, you're on run of Fez. Yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, this chicken college that uh, was bothering me. Yeah. And uh, at a party and she kept bothering me. She found out that I wrestled in high school. So she kept pinching me under the ribs trying to get me to wrestle her. So finally I, I kind of lost it. And I had about 100 pounds on her. So I double-legged her. And, and in the process uh, she busted her lip wide open. It was bleeding everywhere. So I had a group of guys kind of, you know, come to come back to the apartment and try to uh, do a little riot action like I was Frankenstein or something. Right, like everything. Yeah, like now they're burning torches outside your house. Yeah. Now and you're the fucking the animal. Least, Slapping her in a side recliner. All because you believe in equality. All because you support the woman's movement. <laughs> what is wrong with that? She got in his friends in Frankenstein, that bitch's house, afterwards. What did you do? How are you talking now? Did you just get ghetto on me? <laughs> no. What are you doing? I'm saying get the bitch for he's going to her house. You just said that bitch's house? <laughs> what are you, hanging around with Bronx Johnny so much you don't know what you're doing anymore? Chris, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, guys. Yeah. Um, hey, I live um, three miles north of FM 1960, and I want to assure you that it is a major highway. that's four large paved lanes. It's not an Apache trail. It's not a place for Mexicans to cross the border on a little trail. It is a major highway. Are you telling me no Mexicans are running down that thing at all? No, nah, well, I don't know. Sometimes you might see some, but, you know, it's a major highway. So it's more than just borough traffic. All right, put the prize back in. Prize goes I'm back in. Right, thank you very much, Chris. That's a major highway. Yes. Uh, fan, fan, you're on running Fez. Hey, guys, how's it going? Yeah. Good. Um, I just want to say, Eastside Dave, he should have thought about it a little bit. China Doll against Michael J. Fox, he could take a hit like that. He'd just shake it off. See ya. I'd crush I just chest. meant someone small. That I, was the wrong choice. I'd crush his fucking chest one People time. are hung up on the disease. <laughs> I just want someone of small stature, that's all. I'd, dry, I, see, I'd cave that fucking chest in. I'd break his fucking sternum. Well, d there's no reason for that. <laughs> to prove a point. Well, Family Ties was a great show. You know, was it? That. Yes. Uh, here's uh, Kind Bud. Kind Bud, you're running Fez. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I hate to be on the, the fag in the rooms team, but I don't know if it's a Georgia thing or a fag thing, and Ron, don't say they go hand in hand, but... I believe they you do. Never, you never, ever, ever hit a woman with your fist. Maybe open-handed, never with the fist. So you're saying slap her. Worst case scenario, just get her off of you. Push her back, open-handed, never hit her. Why? Okay, let me go back. Bendel missing, Bendel missing. And I'm talking about a woman who not only can take a slap, she asks for it. You keep your shit like, in wake your me face. up when we're fucking. I need a little fucking... I gotta get the blood flowing. Back him. Keep your stuff in your safe. Mm. All right. Peace out. Uh, Fez, uh, a lot of people agreeing with you. You're really uh, picking up a lot of fans today. Yeah, just kind bud so far, I think. No, it's good, though. You and kind bud. He is a kind bud. Stop pushing yourself as a fag, though. Put yourself out there as you are. Co-host of the show. Yeah, I don't remember ever pushing that aspect. God, this is a terrible present you gave me. Fucking ashtray. I know. I wish. I really wish you had kept it home and not brought it in here. I'm just going to put it over there. I'm going to put it near the... Uh, here's what I do. I'll throw it over here in the corner next to the fucking present that uh, you got from uh, Bobo. That's the portrait uh, Bobo made of me. Why don't you take that home and hang it up like I do? <laughs> it's kind of creepy because it's a portrait of me and the beard in the portrait is made from my real beard hair. 